I think, and this will sound strange, that good fiction must be true. Good fiction must feel real, so real that you are experiencing it. There's an old saying by Coleridge that um, people often quote that says that good fiction creates a willing suspension of disbelief. And you know, I've never thought that goes nearly far enough. First of all, there's nothing willing about it. You have to be drawn into a story without choice. You have to just plunge right in because this is such an amazing experience. And second of all, there's no suspension of disbelief. In fact, that's negative. What's really happening in a good story is that you believe. It's a positive attraction. And so a great story creates a, 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 an immediate plunge into belief. And that's, I think, what our goal is. So my advice to young writers is make it true. How do you do that? First of all, I think you have to enliven all the senses. That's what happened when Merlin washed ashore. Remember, there was the sound of seagulls, there's the smell of the briny breeze, there's the taste of sand on your tongue, there's, there's the feel of the water drawing on your tunic, there's the sight of this rocky coastline where he has no idea where he is. And then, beyond the senses, and by the way, all of those are on page one. So you're really there, right there with Merlin. Beyond the senses, there's the realm of the heart. You really have to make a story feel true in the emotional level. When Merlin suddenly realizes, when he's, when he's, when he's gagged and, 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 and pulled himself up on the shore and realizes he has survived some sort of shipwreck and almost drowned, then he realizes something even worse has happened, even worse than this horrible experience, and that is that he has lost all of his memory, every last little bit of it. He has no clue who he is, where he came from, who his parents were, nothing. Imagine this, he doesn't even know his own name. And that's where his story begins. Now, if you were to ask him in that moment, do you think, young man, that you're gonna be the greatest wizard of all times someday, that people will sing songs and tell stories about you for more than 15 centuries as the great wizard of Camelot? the mentor to King Arthur, the greatest mage of all times. What do you think he would say? Not likely. But the point is he still has it down inside. And yet in that moment, all you feel is his lost, homeless, nameless, loneliness. That's really where it begins. You have to feel that. And then the last way to make a story true, I think, in addition to the senses and the emotions, is in the realm of the spirit. There has to be something about this tale that crosses all boundaries of language and culture and time. And you know, it's, I think, bound up in that big idea, that experience of what difference can one life make? That's a question that's at the bottom of all my books. Really, does one life matter? And while I believe the answer is absolutely yes, we have to earn that answer. We have to struggle and go through incredible turmoil and feel lost and alone to get there. But when it works, it's a beautiful thing.